a Jew whose Jewishness was formed by, ex by American experience or Israeli experience has no natural understanding of what European Jewish experience is like. None, because America and Israel were basically designed as the two great modern experiments in getting away from the terms of Jewish life in Europe. And we're talking about the, the irrefutable resurgence of a classical kind of anti-Semitism in the historical capital of this prejudice, I mean the continent. I mean, you quote Ronald Blotter at the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz right. saying that Europe looks more like 1930, yeah, 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 and, and you say that that's actually... You know, I, I understand the emotion that drives that, yeah. and also it's a political statement designed to energize European leadership to do more than they're doing. I, I get it. Yeah. Um, it's inaccurate. Fair enough, but why, it's why is it inaccurate? and irresponsible. Yeah. Two main reasons that it's not 1938 in Europe right now. The first main reason is that Israel exists. So you can get on a plane now from Paris and go to Israel if you're scared to live as a Jew in Paris. The second reason, and this is very, very interesting, you have European leaders now who are ardently pro-Jewish in a kind of way, not only because they have actual sympathy for Jews, uh, which I think they, they do, but because they understand that, that what begins with the Jews never ends with the Jews. So you have this unlikely scenario, or historically unlikely scenario, of uh, the German Chancellor being the foremost defender of the Jews in Europe. You have Manuel Valls, who is a heroic figure, uh, in my mind, my personal opinion, uh, uh, the Prime Minister of France, who has basically said that France would not be France without Jews, and therefore but we have to... But there's a historical irony to this, which is that, that if you look at the political history of the Jews in the exile, historians have described this that Jews always made vertical alliances with power and authority right. and preferred them to horizontal alliances hmm. with populations. So the king, the prince, there was always a prince. the archbishop, yeah. ecclesiastical authority, the Ottoman I mean the Ottomans. Authority, they always did this. So the idea, well, now they have Merkel and Valls and Hollande, they, whoever they have, that's nice, but um, th th that's already conceding that Jewish life in Europe is a little safer because they have somehow got the protection of the mm -hmm. king. Okay, so not only does Israel exist today, um, uh, but you actually have the Israeli prime minister importuning European Jews to to move to Israel and leave that all behind. I mean, Netanyahu is a is a man who has a prejudice against subtlety, quite obviously. And so when he said what he said, he said it in a very direct way. He could have obviously said, "Look." Jews of Europe, you know, that, you. Uh, you know that we exist, <laughs> right. you know that Israel is here for you. Instead, he said, come here now. But uh, let, me, let me put, if, if, if you are more offended by Netanyahu's call for Jews of Europe to come to Israel than you are by the anti-Semitism that is causing Jews to think about moving to Israel, then, then you, 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 you've lost the plot in a kind of way. Um, it is a completely natural and appropriate thing for an Israeli prime minister to do, to say to the Jews of Europe, hey, you know, you, you've got a home with us. That's, that's, that's completely normal. And to, to watch these European leaders sort of denounce him in such emotional terms is, is a little bit much. Sometimes there's part of me thinks, you know what, stop being insulted by, by the Jews and develop some social policy for these alienated Muslim youths in your poor neighborhoods and actually do something so socially, right. politically, about your society that may actually offer some long-term solutions. Well, this is exactly this is exactly why you, I, I mean, think do that, this is exactly why it. putting What's paratroopers in front of a synagogue is I dealing mean, the, with the uh, problems in the banlieue. The problem is not at the shul. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, 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 if, if, if that's, there, if that's your if that's your solution to the problem, yeah, yeah, if that's your solution to the problem, then then I mean, this real you know, there's the problem of terrorists and the problem of terrorism. The problem of terrorists you can solve by killing terrorists. The problem of terrorism you can't. And in the case of homegrown terrorism, like the case of terrorism everywhere, it requires nation building this would literally be nation building at home that's what France needs but, and they're, but they're paralyzed they're totally <laughs> paralyzed they're totally paralyzed do you think that would make the difference Jeff yes uh, oh. very much so very very much so uh, look the reason that Marie but we've seen radicalization of you know kids from successful economically successful it's an families. open question we've about seen. whether you can assimilate and absorb all of the disaffected Muslim youth in France and into French society, yes, it's an open question. Okay, no, but I you got to start. Want to but, but you got to start trying. We also feed. know from many cases that terrorists, suicide bombers, 
have been educated people, yeah. have been middle class people, have been. I mean, this is a very complicated problem. Yes. France alone is not going to solve right. this problem. Right. But I'll tell you, spending a lot of time in Europe right. has made me very appreciative of the American ability to absorb almost anyone and turn anyone into an American. It's really remarkable. I mean, when you think about it, put it in the simplest terms possible, the idea of a Moroccan American or a Turkish American is completely understandable. The idea of a Turkish German. It's harder to get your but mind around. But that's why there is no such thing as the West. There's the American West and there's mm. the European West. There right. is no such and, thing. The, and the European right. West the isn't so West. West in the, Euro the European mm. West is based on an old model of the nation state, according to which ideally the political boundaries and the cultural boundaries coincide. But of course they never do. So they always have this problem of minorities. In the United States, we don't know. We wouldn't know what a problem of minority means. We're all minorities. We are hyphenated, mm -hmm. right? Except for some tragic cases that we all know about. Europe is. I mean, you go back to this problem of the other. They just there's there's the the native and the foreigner. What someone like Marine Le Pen is arguing for is complete effacement. That that Muslims will be absorbed when they completely efface their well, identity. That's the irony. And that's you see. and that of course is a in is a, a non-starter. In it's France, true. this whole laicite thing, they made such a strategic error because they wanted integration, but they wanted it coerced. And they mean and by integration, they mean a degree of self-erasure, culturally, mm -hmm. in terms of identity, that leads only to alienation and hostility. Right. Mm -hmm. If that's, someone that's, tells you not to wear words, a hijab, you'll right. wear a hijab. Whereas in the American right. model, which, which we call pluralism, um, you are in fact rewarded now. Now there was anti-Semitism here, it was never like that of course, but in any way, for the last 50 or 60 years and forevermore, there is, you are rewarded for difference. Difference is expected. It's not a, it's not a social problem. It's not an obstacle it's to integration. It's It's cool. I mean, it's, it's a norm. It's a norm. It's a social wearing norm. Wearing a kippah, wearing hijab is a lifestyle it's a social choice. Norm. And it's interesting to people. In France, it's seen you know? as a threat. Actually, one of the interesting things Marine Le Pen says to you is that the kippah is okay, but the veil yeah. is not. Well, she's which is, that's a very cynical yes, maneuver. Know, the kippah, it's kosher now. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, but she's trying to kosher her party. Yeah. One of the signs, one of the symptoms of deep illness uh, in the condition of, of French Jewry is that you have some Jews, and ironically, or however you want to look at it, Jews who are descendants of people who ran away from North Africa, who are feeling sympathy toward Marine Le Pen's party. They're not the only ones, obviously. She's the most popular politician in France right now, uh, precisely because they understand in some deep way that she might not like Jews, but she doesn't like Muslims more. This is going to be a bigger story as we move toward 2017 uh, to the French election. But she understands that one pathway toward more mainstream acceptance is to neutralize the criticism of the French Jewish community. So where do you all come down on the big question then? Is it, is it time um, for the Jews of Europe to leave? I understand those who do. I really do. Despite the irony that they'll get to Israel and there'll be paratroopers protecting them there too. I mean, that's, a, that's kind of a cheap irony. The only way I can answer this question is, 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 is very personally, uh, which is to say the following, that at my synagogue in Washington, D.C., we often will have services outside. The thought of doing that in, in Europe is uh, it's, it's an impossibility. You can't do anything out in the open anymore, and it seems like a very straightened, uh, narrow, and um, archaic way to live, given that there are alternatives. All that said, I can't sit in judgment of anybody who is in a place and they've been in a place for generations. And I also admire, I, I do admire those who say they want to stay and fight. Yeah. And you have a very practical, you have a very practical problem. I was in Toulouse and there are 18,000 Jews and there are five or six people who are crucial to that community. And if they were to say, you know what, I give up, I'm moving to Israel, I'm moving to Montreal, uh, that community will begin to collapse. If you stay and fight, is that a fight for France or Toulouse, or is that a fight for Judaism? I mean, it seems so it's tragic both. to imagine it's Europe both. actually, you it's know. It's both. It's both. I mean, the yeah. fight for a liberal state makes it the fight for both. I mean, this is not just about the Jews in France. This is about the Jews and the Muslims in France. And this complicates it diabolically. The Jews are a very passive player in the in this you know, larger drama of the confrontation between the French state, French laicite, you know, and, 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 and these Muslim It is not communities. the case that France is, France is essentially anti-Semitic now. But unfortunately, anti-Semitic violence and anti-Semitic, um, I mean, disgraceful anti-Semitic acts are being perpetrated in places where they have precedence. It's, Toulouse, it's a classic example. You know, there was a terrible massacre at a school in, in Toulouse. I was talking to somebody in, in the Jewish community there, and they say, well, it wasn't as bad as the Crusades 1320. And by the right. way, not to open up yet a whole other can of worms here, this Muslim 
Judeophobia that you see. This is not created in complete isolation. This is not wholly a Middle Eastern import. Uh, this is this is fed by classical European anti-Semitic tropes. Right, and memory of the Holocaust had kept those tropes somewhat at bay. For well, well, now you have right? you have memory of the Holocaust served various purposes. I think. I mean, we all believe that people would remember and watch those films, and it would never happen again. But there are there are sick minds for whom the memory of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. um, liberated them for certain acts. The memory of the Holocaust has turned out to be a heartbreakingly complicated factor um, in this story. And maybe the single most tragic or troubling aspect of all of this is that in many parts of Europe we've moved from Holocaust remembrance to Holocaust taunting. So that the Holocaust has now been weaponized by anti-Semites against Jews um, in a number of ways. The first is, of course, Holocaust denial. The second is that it did happen, uh, but you are actually Nazis. Look at Israel and look at its behavior. Israel is the new Nazis. You, by extension, are Nazis. Therefore, the Holocaust was justified. What happens in Europe, unlike America, is that the governments try to legislate speech in a way that, that pushes this underground. The security of European Jews cannot be based on the memory of the Holocaust, because the memory of the Holocaust is going to become more and more attenuated as the years go by. The, European Jewish security can only be based on a very, very reliable uh, sense of the rights of Jews to live in Europe as individuals and as a community. We can't Why is it so hard to get to that in Europe? First of all, European liberalism, as we know from its history, constantly provoked recoils and allergic reactions. Fascism and communism both were in some way allergic responses to, to, to European liberalism. Hmm. The, the liberal, liberal state can actually collide with an illiberal society yes. or an illiberal culture. Um, and I think to some extent that's what's happening. And that's a very difficult situation because then what you have is an imposition from on top in some sense. You, you, know, you have a kind of top-down liberalism whereby the state is liberal and motivated by all the right values. And then there is this bottom which lives peacefully most of the time in that, but maybe doesn't, isn't really of it sufficiently to some extent, or at least some of it. If the tragic outcome of this is that the Jews, in fact, do need to all leave Europe, um, what would be the most Jewish thing for the last Jew to do, the most appropriate fitting thing? One said that the last thing that a Jew should do when he or she leaves Europe is spit. I mean, I think that um, if the if, Jews last sigh, yeah, well, exactly. But if, if the Jews leave Europe, I have to say I will regard it in some ways as sad, but I won't regard it as tragic because I think the the tragedy of of Europe and the Jews has been has been in operation for There's a very long time. We're, we're, we're well past that. I mean, we're way, we're, I mean, this is not... We're well past but this the is moment. What, I mean, this we're is, well and you heard this, this is what Hitler wanted. Well, you know? I'm not worried about giving Hitler posthumous victories. I mean, I'm worried about the safety of the Jews and the flourishing of Jewish Fair identity. A, I mean. not all the Jews yeah. are going to leave, so right. it, 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 it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, B, one of the things you realize when you travel around these places is that the Holocaust was extraordinarily effective. Poland is, I guess, probably the most obvious yeah. example. A, po a, a Poland, which had three million Jews before the Holocaust, has now, I think, roughly 30,000 30, 30, yeah. or so. Hitler lost the war, but he, 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 he won much of what he wanted to, to win, and it's a sad fact, and it's, and it's, and it's true, and therefore, I don't, I, I think like Leon, I don't see it as a terrible tragedy of the Jews. You know, when Leon, you're, the, tra says, the tragedy is, the tragedy happened. Though. But you did say earlier that it would also be a victory for Judaism for Jews to stay in France. It's not entirely, it's, it's a victory for France, but it also does, it is a bit of a problem for the Jews, isn't it, too? Oh, no, I don't look, Judaism is portable. Um, that was one of the, that was the great innovation that happened at the time of the burning of the Second Temple. Hmm. We're dissociated, we're, uh, Judaism From is portable. Place. You can take it wherever you go, and the Jews have taken it wherever they go. U um, ultimately, Europe but, needs Jews more than Jews need Europe. I, I, don't, I don't really care if Europe needs I, Jews. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not representing say. the European no, Union saying, when I say this. I'm just simply acknowledging that, you know, that, that, that if, if, Europe becomes an inhospitable place for Except Jews. It means it's an inhospitable place. But we know that it's an inhospitable place. The, the burden of proof is on how hospitable it can become. Not, in other words, that's the great mystery. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one final thing, James, about on that on that yeah. point, which is which is, and this is a question I asked over and over again. I asked every European Jew I met, said, "Do you think that there is some sort of light at the end of the tunnel?" No one is optimistic. These are not Jews who are being made miserable 
uh, in the Pale of Settlement or in Putin's Russia, which, by the way, will, as soon as he t turns his attention from gays, it'll go to Jews, I have no doubt about it, or in Argentina at a certain time, or in Iran. At a, these are Western European states. So there is a certain pain that one feels because it does represent the failure of an experiment that we would like to see succeed. Judaism will be fine, but the, the question well, is the future of the that's liberal. That's in the hands the of Jews. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the liberal. But the question is the liberal, the liberal experiment, right? And we're seeing all these Arab states trying to embark now on democracy, one no. form or another. And what does it mean well, if Jews aren't the frog in the pot, but in the sense they are the canary in the coal mine? Right. What we're really saying is, in a sense, liberalism has failed. If this doesn't work, it has failed in Europe. And what does that mean about the project I worldwide? I think that there is democracy in the United States. There is democracy in Canada. Both these countries would welcome these Jews. I think that after everything that happened in Europe, I don't need Jews to be martyrs for European liberalism or democracy anymore. This is the afterlife of let, the European me, Jewish community. This is the saving remnant. That community was destroyed. I would prefer them to leave in a kind of way because I think it's not very safe to be there. This so, is the yeah, ancient underside of Europe. This yeah. always was. This is not a new development. It takes certain new forms. Um, the discourse takes certain But Leon, you have to admit that it's odd that it's, it's, this has happened in part in, in a fit of inattention by the importation of poor Muslims to, to labor on behalf of of, of, of industrial Europe by these Muslims being put in these ghettos and in disenfranchised positions. In other words, it's not what you would expect the course of history to, 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 to lead you. I mean, this is not traditional European anti-Semitism in the main. It, it is true that these new Muslim communities are the proximate causes of this crisis. Um, but the non-proximate causes, the more distant causes, or are the treatment of these, or the treatment of these communities, yeah. the societies to which they arrived, the prejudice that they found, the indifference that they found, that, that and also, and I don't mean to take, you know, to to, to, to exonerate them of any responsibility right. in all this, Fair and their apparent lack of interest in in actually integrating. The question I have, and I don't know if you know the answer, or anyone knows the answer, is to what degree have Muslims tried to push in and have been repulsed, or to what degree do they not even bother to try? I think it's a complicated mix. But uh, I, 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 I think I, it's comp I think there's there's a lot of blame to go around on both sides. I think that there's an irony in some of these countries that multiculturalism has been used as a reason for remaining indifferent to these communities. And then when you leave them alone, lo and behold, they are themselves fighting an internecine struggle with their own demons. The big open question, I think, and this is what you hear in the French right, in, in some quarters of the socialists, but not everywhere, is maybe Islam, or Islam in its, in its French manifestation, uh, is somehow different and is not meltable Look, but in the same way. This was said about the Jews during the great debates about Jewish emancipation in the 18th, early 19th century in Western Europe, the argument always was that the Jews cannot be absorbed because right. they are a state within a state, because their laws and their way of life make them unassimilable, that they simply have a... a do, you think they, do you think the analogy is actually I correct? I think the analogy is correct, but I think we're at a very, very early stage in the story. One right? of the things that we do forget, and this needs to be said, is that many, many thousands, if not millions, of Euro Muslims in Europe are trying to yeah, of course. Be integrate oh, yeah. integrate themselves. No, this goes. No, 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 it doesn't go without saying well, because it doesn't go saying. without saying because there is a stereotype that, yeah. that this is all yeah. an unvariegated no, no, mass of, course, of, of, of future and current uh, radicals who want to chop people's heads off, and it's not. So, where does that analogy take you, though? Um, it means we're at the beginning of a long process in which both the fr French community and the Muslim community are going to, as I say, experience certain shocks in their encounters with each other. And in the name of social peace, at least, they're going to have to begin to make adjustments. This has happened by this happens in even the most benign situations. I mean, you know, Muslim immigrants to Queens, mm -hmm. right? They're already beginning to notice that their daughter was seen talking to some Italian kid who isn't obviously Muslim or that she wore a skirt that was a little bit too short. Right? I mean, this is this is the story of immigrants in the yeah. but one has to bear with it and one has to direct these encounters, I mean this benignly in the name of certain values that will make, that will open them up. And that is exactly what may be missing in, in the French case where um, both, both communities seem to have very insular conceptions. You know, what I hear you both saying is in the end it hasn't worked though. I mean integration has not, not really, failed. No. No. These societies will not be sustainable 
unless they find the people who live in these societies find ways to live with each other. I mean, it really is that simple. It's not just a Jewish question. The Jews are collateral in this, in a kind of, uh, in a kind of strange way. I forgot who said it, but somebody said, you know, when, when civilizations clash, Jews die. You know, that's an overstatement in this, in this case, except in some unfortunate instances. But, but we're, we're, we're seeing a clash between two different ways of being. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing an indigestible Muslim minority uh, confronting a, a Europe that is paralyzed and doesn't even know itself anymore. Uh, and the Jews happen to be sitting there, and sometimes as an afterthought they're attacked, sometimes as a, as a, as a convenient scapegoat they're attacked. But they're not, they're not, in a way, part of the, the, the larger drama. They just sit there and get it in the neck. Sad. I think that's, that's, that's the way I would put it. Jews are not in control of what happens to Jews in Europe, and that is the best reason to sort of think about an exit.